Hi everyone, my name is Justin, and I'm here to show you the essential brushes for the Fluid Pack in Painter and Particle Shop. In this pack, of course, we're looking over different fluids, but we're going to be showing it off with water, since that's a pretty basic way of understanding. And we have all sorts of fluids, whether it drips or leaks or um, anything. Uh, but again, water is a pretty good way of uh, thinking about it and expressing it and understanding how each brush works. So I'm going to go, go ahead and start. Uh, at the top of the list here and go through. We've got this liquid brush here that's pretty thick and really what it is is it's a typical paintbrush but we've got some particles that have, are lagging behind to show the splash off to the side. If you've ever noticed like these little waterfalls over here we've really just got this stream but then we've got these little streams off to the side so this really helps to add to that that expression especially if, if we're leaking from something or we've got liquids coming from the side. Um, this can be used in all sorts of areas. Let's go ahead and just kind of, I'm going to lower my opacity here. And you can kind of see how that this creates kind of a liquid flow. I kind of didn't do a very good job of, of finding out how that that's going to... It's kind of a bad area over here since this really does go all the way off to the side of the picture. But you can kind of see how that this takes this surface here and adds a liquid effect and expression to it. Let's go ahead and move on to mist. This one is pretty great because let's say you've got some hard liquid such as, in fact let's go ahead and make a liquid stroke here. Okay, now I'm going to take my mist and what I can really do here is I can blend and kind of make it look as though there's some some liquidy mist that's that's kind of coming off of this and making it just that much more believable in the image. I, as you can see, some are, is used at the bottom of the waterfall. We can even raise it, or even if we want to, we can we can add some atmospheric pers perspective in this image with just a more organic um, kind of airbrush. Let's go ahead and move on to where are we at? Ocean spray, and this one is kind of like mist, but it's kind of got more of some diagonal crisscrossing this is more of a hard spray let's go ahead and use some in, on the surface over here you can kind of see how this might be a little more realistic for certain circumstances it's got some color variation to it right now we're in the blue green but let's say we move over to the blue purple we're going to get both of those so that's kind of a fun realistic way of adding some really chaotic and harsh waters coming through um, not flowing through so uh, so much like the mist but uh, almost as water going everywhere. Let's go ahead and look at pour here. Oops. And pour is really for things such as, you know, water coming out of glasses or, you know, you want a little more of a glimmer, um, a, gl a glimmery effect to your water coming out. This isn't really, this could apply to the waterfall. You can see kind of some, of, of course, that's going to apply to it. But I really recommend this for maybe a glass of water. Uh, you can turn the opacity up right here. If you're in Painter, you can play with the grain on this. And you can, oh, full grain doesn't really. So the lower you go with this, the more dense of a pour that you're going to get. It's almost like a different opacity. And that's pretty cool to play with because let's say you've got a thick liquid versus a really light one or you just want to add to one, um, that becomes very useful. So let's go ahead and move on to Puddle. And this one I'm particularly excited about. If you look over in these rocks, I actually, I actually made these puddles over here with this brush. And I went ahead and grabbed this color here. Maybe I grabbed a, a brighter one. And of course, I've, I've added some mist to them, but you can kind of see I made this puddle. And then you can just kind of drop. So let's go ahead and look at a bigger one and see how it looks. Of course, this is in water, so it's not particularly a puddle. But you can see how I wrap it around and it creates that circular, very expressive effect for a puddle. Let's grab a brighter color here. Not very necessary. But you can see how this brush has got some expressiveness to it. Um, for, real, for the sake of realism, puddles are typically pretty small. So if you had a picture 
where you've got a couple people standing over here and they're standing in a puddle or next to one, you can take this and add a puddle next to them again. And it's a, it's a pretty expressive way to add something pretty simple, what would seem like simple, but it's hard to kind of get down a more realistic version of. And again, if it's on top of something like over here, you can just kind of take it and paint a little pour with it. And then that's kind of nice. Let's move on to rapids. And this is really a way to add a calligraphy to your water, whether it's painted or you've got it over here um, coming off of the water. And it adds a staggery effect to your water so that if water is coming through harshly and you know you need to express that, um, you can you can add this this water stagger and and that helps a much create a much more harsh water effect. Uh, this isn't really a place where I think there would be a lot of rapids, but this is just what we're using for demonstration purposes. So let's move on to showers here. And this one is pretty fun. Again, you can you should be able to play with the whoops, what's it doing here? The grain of this. Yep. And it should be so it's kind of almost like the mist. But a lot more expressive. You got water coming from every direction, um, almost kind of a combination of the ocean spray and the mist. Uh, again, depending on what you kind of wanted to express at the bottom of your water, or maybe somebody puts their foot in the water and you don't have enough splash effect over there. You know, you can kind of tap that into the, into there, and it's that's a pretty great way of expressing that. So we're at showers. Let's go to splash here. So this one's kind of fun because, um, yes, we have the showers right here, but let's say we've got a hard splash. Uh, we got something coming in on a city. Um, we've got kind of a harder way of expressing that with, with showers here. Uh, and the reason is because this is going to be something that's much more on a massive scale. Uh, you can play with the opacity of it. It's on a pretty low opacity for the sake of realism. But let's say you got a, a low one and then you have some saturated colors and then maybe not even that high of opacity. It's a pretty great way of um, not just expressing something, but creating something that is not there if you need to. So if I need to create some water splashes that come in right here, you know, for some reason, I'm going to want a brighter color because, of course, the water gets brighter when it splashes, it catches more light. Maybe not even that big on that small of a puddle. There we go. And I got some water splashing in on those puddles for whatever reason. It's a pretty great way of creating that, not even just expressing it, like I said. So let's move on to surface. And this one is pretty simple. Um, but if you have a wet surface, such as a table or um, a sidewalk, uh, again, you can, you can play with the grain on this if you want it to be more harsh. Um, but you can you can rub this back and forth. You know, if you, if you just play with this as a as a brush, it almost kind of guides itself, and you can kind of figure it out. But I'm going to create more of a wet surface by just rubbing this back and forth. And you can also do this to add you know more surface to your water uh, if you want. We can show water coming in or something, or maybe surrounding someone. This almost creates a layered effect. It almost looks like the water is going up now, or um, you know, just heavily rippling through the through the, our, our little lake here. Let's see here. We've got one more here. This is the flow brush. Let's hope this backs up all the way. And this helps create a flow in our work. So we did go over the rapids one, and that one has a much more harsh circumstance to it. But this is one where again you can play with the with the textures, or I'm sorry, with the uh, with the paper up there, and it does create a more subtle effect. Or you can play with opacity whatever it might be, but this is to show the flow of your water. So if you're trying to show that the water goes from here to here, you know, you can kind of show that flow. Very unrealistic in this picture, but you can kind of see what the intention is um, behind that. And of course, if you did that on a new layer, you could take these little fractal, not fractal, sorry, 
these little um, artifacts right here and kind of back out of them and kind of have something a little more subtle and uh, believable. Anyways, that is it for the fluids pack. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm really excited to see how people add these effects and uh, um, different ways of using liquids in, the, in their image. Uh, th again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you, to see your, your work around the internet.